y does not belong to a intersection b and this implies y belongs to a or y belongs to b and we can uh, in fact um, break it down just like this since y does not belong to the intersection it's not in at least one of them or one of the two sets or it may be in not in both of them okay may not be in any one of them so y does not belong to a or y does not belong to b then we do our usual distributive that thing y belongs to a or y belongs to b and y does not belong to a or y belongs to a or y belongs to b and y does not belong to b keep in mind that whatever you are writing it should be correct uh, this place is somewhat complicated we may uh, make mistakes very easily okay now this implies again we are going to use distributive law y belongs to a and and goes inside y does not belong to a see the difference between this situation and the one we had here here we had or but now we have and or y belongs to b and y does not belong to a b and y does not belong to a so this is our first statement or just like that y belongs to a and y does not belong to b or don't confuse between these ands and ors they should appear in the their uh, proper places otherwise we are done i mean uh, we will we won't get anything and y does not belong to b also the brackets are very important they keep track of the operations or the order of the operations okay now what is this y belongs to a and y does not belong to a this obviously cannot happen so in place of this you can write this is an impossible statement right y belongs to the empty set or if you uh, okay you may ask me how am i uh, suddenly writing empty set here okay let us go by the definition y belonging to a set and y does not belonging to uh, not belonging to another set which happens to be this one itself that is just the definition of a minus a that's all or like that here y belongs to b and y does not belong to a so that means y belongs to b minus a or uh, this implies y belongs to a minus b or y belongs to b minus b okay so now we have the empty set or y belongs to a minus b or y belongs to again the empty set
now because we have r y belongs to empty set union b minus a or y belongs to a minus b union empty set the empty set does not affect a union and we are left with this if we want we can write uh, this statement in the opposite order also i mean switching the places of this simple statements that is because we can in a disjunction and that finally gives us a minus b union because or b minus a hence this set is also a subset of the symmetric difference now you combine this uh, containment relation from uh, with the previous one and get equality thus the symmetric difference equals this okay and this completes the uh, solution okay after that we have ninth okay the ninth one is really big let s b s set let s star be the set whose elements are the various subsets of s so s star is nothing but the power set of s what we normally know as the power set of s that is denoted by s star by hartstein in s star we define an addition and a multiplication as follows if a and b are two elements in s star and uh, in brackets it's written that yeah this means they are subsets of s remember they are subsets of s okay then number 
addition of a plus i mean addition of a and b is defined to be nothing but the symmetric difference that we have got in the previous exercise a minus b union b minus a and for multiplication we are taking nothing but our ordinary intersection what is the reason for calling these operations addition and multiplication that will soon become clear because um, so far we have only just defined some things now we are going to say what we are supposed to do in this exercise prove the following laws that govern these operations a this addition is associative just like ordinary addition of numbers and this is the um, this is the longest one i mean in terms of length of the proof and length of steps this is the longest one b just like our ordinary distributive law that multiplication distributes itself over addition here also we have that this is almost easy this just says that a intersection a is a which we already know d what about d a plus a is the empty set and finally there is one more a cancellation law if a plus b equals a plus c then b equals c okay we can cancel a from both sides having b is equal to c okay so we are now going to prove this these things in order to prove part a we will actually need some uh, set theoretic identities some of them we already know but some we really don't know and uh, okay let, let us just uh, go with the solution and see what happens so first comes part a and our claim is this we claim a plus b plus c i should carefully say yes this is a minus b union c union b minus a union c union c minus a union d union a intersection b intersection c b first claim this we will prove this with the help of this it will become much easier to prove this uh, the actual thing actual associative law but in order to prove this claim we will now need some new set theoretic identities and they are like this so let us just write it accordingly in order to 
prove the above claim we need the following identities number 1 Uh, oh but before i write them i have to say about the sets for any subsets d e and f of s we have we are taking d e and f because a b and c have already been taken d minus e minus f yes this becomes nothing but d minus e union f which is d minus e intersection d minus f this is one identity actually there are two but it can be regarded as one number 2 d union e minus f equals d minus f union e minus f and finally number 3 the third one is the most uh, counter intuitive and complicated d minus in brackets we have e minus f and that gives us d minus e union the intersection of all the three now since these are not standard identities we have to first of all prove them and then only we can hope to prove this one then with the help of this one we will prove this one and that is only part a that is why it's going to go on for some time quite some time anyway why what we got to do we just got to do so let us first prove this one we first prove one not that d minus e union f equal to d minus e intersection d minus f can be proved just like one of the de morgan's laws in de morgan's law you had i mean in one of them you had the complement of say e union f here in place of complement we have general difference if d contains both u and f this will become de morgan's law because then d minus e union f will be the complement of e union f this will be the complement of e and this will be the complement of f now what i am saying here is that this can be proved just like one of the de morgan's laws you go to the proof of de morgan's law we have done it in the previous video and you see how this can be handled even when d does not contain e and f as subsets it's not very different it's actually quite the same thing you just have to modify that proof according to the present situation so i leave this one to you 
we will prove this part now first first equality okay now we have say uh, x belongs to b minus e minus f then this implies what x belongs to b minus e and x does not belong to f by the definition of this uh, difference again this means x belongs to d and x does not belong to e and x does not belong to f and this can be written using the fact that conjunction of statements is associated this is from mathematical logic these are two conjunctions so i can write it like this okay now x is in neither e nor f so x is not in their union because it is in neither of them so x does not belong to e union f and this is happening because we have and okay we don't have or if we had or here we will have intersection not how this thing is quite counterintuitive although we have when we have and here we have union if we had or here we would have intersection but keep in mind that it's not a uh, direct statement it's a negation here an element is not belonging to the set that's why this opposite nature is appearing okay and this implies x belongs to d minus e union f so this is a subset of this d minus e minus f is a subset of d minus e union f next So next we take an element here. We can take x itself. I mean, how many different types of letters are we going to take? We have to prove so many things. D minus E union F. Because here x is a variable element. It's nothing constant. So this implies x belongs to D and x so this practically is just these arguments in the opposite order e union f x belongs to d and x does not belong to the union so x belongs to neither of them x does not belong to e and x does not belong to f inside the brackets we have x belongs to d minus e and x does not belong to f so this implies hence d minus e union f is also a subset of d minus e minus f so using these two containments we have equality
So this proves what our first uh, um, identity that we have presented. Now next we prove two. Okay, so two, this is also very easy. We have, so in two, let us recall what we had to prove. We have to prove d union e minus f equals d minus f union e minus f. Okay, so we start by considering an element in the first set d union e minus f so this implies x belongs to d union e and x does not belong to f x belongs to d or x belongs to e and x does not belong to f this implies now we are going to use distributive law x belongs to d and and will come inside x does not belong to f or x belongs to e and x does not belong to f this implies x belongs to d minus f or x belongs to e minus f which further implies x belongs to d minus f union e minus f okay now let us uh, shorten the thing i mean uh, after that we have to again take an element here and then go through all the steps obtaining this instead of that we can now do that thing here itself you see i next i will take an element in this set so this is my statement now can i go from this to this yes i can because this is union so this implies in the other direction this or this further x belongs to d minus f means x belongs to d and x does not belong to f like that this means x belongs to e and x not belonging to f so this also implies this then from here again using distributive law i can write like this so this statement implies this this again further implies this this implies this you this is a valid uh, argument set of arguments it just says that not only are the statements uh, implying uh, the other statements that are coming after them but the or these statements are actually equivalent and the conclusion here is this hence this saves our writing labor but keep in mind this does not always happen you you may not always have this uh, facility of uh, showing everything in a, at one go here it happens luckily so hence d union e minus f is a subset of d d minus f union e minus f and d minus f union e minus f is also a subset of d union e minus f 
plus we have equality from now on if possible if we can do this we will do this okay we won't do uh, i mean we won't show that two containments separately if possible d minus f union e minus f next we so this completes the uh, second the proof of the second identity next we prove 